Hi all. I have quite an emotional and symbolic symbolic game to show you today. Leela ID 11041 against the Fire 7.1 engine. So this game choice by David Grosvenor uh, reminded me actually of my dad, uh, who taught me chess from a very young age, <laughs> from about five years old. Uh, I started learning the game. Uh, was primary school champion, and my dad was very fond of the Stonewall Attack. There was a book called uh, Play Better Chess by Leonard Barden, which I really recommend. It has great illustrations showing that era of British chess where there was the crop of super, not super grandmasters, but just strong grandmasters like John Nunn, John Spillman, uh, Murray Chandler, that generation, uh, Nigel Short, all starting and competing with each other. The era of the master game on TV. But yeah, my dad, I believe, picked up the Stonewall Attack system from Leonard Barden's Play Better Chess. It's one of my favourite chess books of all time, actually. Maybe second to The World of Chess by Sadie and Lessing. So anyway, in this game, the book moves given uh, to David Grover. It wasn't my choice to him, he just chose this is uh, the bird's opening, which can go into the Stonewall attack. E3 sets the tone for the Stonewall defence as black with white, though it's called Stonewall attack. <laughs> so bishop g7, bishop e2, knight c6. Uh, so c3 starting to, you know, continuing the construction of this granite in the centre to the bishop. Knight f6. And you'll see in my pin notes, I've actually taken time out here to analyze what I used to play against my dad with black which was a quick e5 I thought worth checking out here if d6 this position it might be best for white to pounce with d5 here for example here uh, this should be okay black can't afford to take that because of check that's a little trap here um, so it seems as though it should be okay for white it's a bit fragile the center but technically black has the edge here, this delayed central construction. It seems as though black might have good counterplay against the center. Uh, so I thought, yeah, it's a little bit on the shaky side, d6 with this e5 plan. It's, it's a classic recipe to try and undermine white on the dark square. So if we run this through again though, uh, there's a more technical continuation here to try and exploit this, but this is just crazy, an absolutely crazy line. This is madness, this is computer generated madness. Not King F1 because of Knight G3. <laughs> and no one no one would play this for either side. But just for the record. Is, yeah, there's craziness going on. But uh yeah, so D6 the idea of D6 and E5 was something which I used to win a lot of games against my I remember. And uh but we st he still played it relentlessly. <laughs> but uh he taught me all sorts of openings really but that was one he later like leaned on with great interest the stonewall system so anyway d5 this gives white a nice kind of lock on the e5 square it does hem in this bishop and so leela can she actually solve this positional issue this is the major you know bad bishop of the stonewall the stonewall defense and the stonewall attack is this going to be a really bad piece is black going to really lock down on the light squares and make sure this is a, a hemmed in bishop? Okay, so knight bd2. Uh, because the formation has been set here, I'll, I'll show you a, a picture. So my dad's taught me chess. He's got the Dracula tooth like I have. And uh, yeah, without him taking me to tournaments, I wouldn't have really had such a great passion for chess, I believe. So rest in peace, Dad. Um, Okay, uh, let's carry on now the game. So uh, let's see, knight bd2, queen b6, knight e5. Now both sides castle, castle. h5 seems to discourage g4 because sometimes if black plays bishop f5, white might actually pounce here, afford to pounce it seems with g4. This might seem like quite crude, creating weaknesses, but it, there might be a justification for f5 later for example here is asking for f5 and knight d3 to try and get black to release that central tension because of the c5 issue 
So say C takes this opens up that bishop you'll see in this line and white can actually squish a bit on the king side. If black plays very dynamic like this this can be parried with C4 so white doesn't try and uh, do too much but kill this bishop uh, squish the bishop and this should lead to a technical advantage for white this kind of scenario. Uh, so that is kind of more uh, playable for white in theory how to like stop the bishop from doing anything there. So anyway h5 does seem to have tones of stopping uh, any g4 from white or discouraging it. But bishop d3 actually stops bishop f5 down its tracks in, in any case at the moment. Black doesn't really want that structural damage. So a5 we have a4 bishop e6 h3 now as though there is an interest in g4 in any case despite h5 rook a c8 queen e1 uh, so this looks very nice that the queen can position herself in a very attacking location whilst black's queen is interesting in queen side pressure king uh, goes to g8 king h1 queen c7 and now white plays g4 which creates semi-open g file pressure the idea is to take with the knight here if taking with the pawn uh, then knight takes this seems to be okay for black to grab this pawn here and it seems dynamically uh, equal black's got that f5 square uh, so there's some issues for white to face here okay so uh, basically after hg knight takes is looks safer Although that that knight on e5 Tartico probably wouldn't approve. He said the knight on e5 and the attack plays itself. Well, it had to be used here. Knight h5. Uh, so king g2 was played now. Uh, so c4, which releases the central tension. This is not to be taken lightly. This sort of move. It also kind of weakens these dark squares potentially. Uh, so why did black want to do that? Well, that's that's interesting. Maybe white is brewing some initiative here in any case. But anyway, let's go with the game. Bishop c2. F5, another quite committal move, leaving potentially a backward pawn on the semi open g file. The knight does go back into e5. Bishop f6. The queen is driven back. Uh, so we have bishop f7. Bishop d1 targeting this knight. Now that's ignored. e6. Black seems to think it's safe enough if white takes that. On knight g7, actually, uh, b3 is good to ignite this bishop along this diagonal. So here, bishop a3, for example. Then taking here, this should be quite comfortable for white. Small edge, at least. Quite comfortable. So uh, e6 was played. Rook g1. Knight takes, f takes, bishop g7. King h1. King h8. Knight f3. Bishop h6. <clears throat> now we have knight g5. So it seems as though, well, this hemmed in bishop is is the problem. But even Magnus Carlsen actually has been playing the Dutch stone well and he, he, he finds the upside of this bishop quite often. So will Leela find the upside of this bishop or will this remain a, a kind of miserable looking position? But of course you can see that white's got some perk at least, this g file, semi open g file to play with. Queen e7, Queen h4, supporting that g5, the advanced, uh, the most advanced piece in White's position, and now b3, yeah, with the idea of Bishop a3. So it's here that White pounces with the Bishop a3 threat. Rook g3 getting out of the way. This is a serious concern here, uh, because um, taking the Queen, taking the Rook after. There's no time for a tactical b2, I believe. So this is just going to be very big advantage for white. So the rook gets out of the way. Then white gets to play the bishop into the game. And now b4 actually, knowing that the bishop's protecting the a4 pawn. And this is not the end of the story for the bishop by any means now. So a takes, the bishop's really in the game on this diagonal. Uh, rook c7, bishop d6. And in fact, white starts to play on both sides of the board really very uh, nicely, rook a2 b6 rook b2 queen e8 and now a5 trying to break in on the queen side this is really dangerous this is a, okay, a kind of goal hanging knight here not a goal hanging form pawn but a goal hanging knight should we call it and it's demonstrated in this line if takes then rook b7 threatens rook h7 uh, so 
that's the threat and what does black do here instead of that silly move let's say bishop g7 then taking here and there's a crushing rook f7 for queen h5 and if takes then there's knight f7 forking king and queen and or mating even better so uh this is a a crushing continuation which must be avoided so in fact b5 is played which gives white a running outside past pawn a great asset in its own right the rook doubles now with naughty intentions <laughs> um yeah the knight's pinned at the moment so there's no knight takes because the queen takes queen so rook a8 the bishop drops back to protect that queen d7 king h2 you might think bishop takes h5 does that do anything actually it is this is very dangerous as well this continuation for example knight f7 this is extremely winning for white there are it's a, it shows it's actually a very strong position where bishop takes h5 might be promising as well now so king h2 there might be better defenses there but that's it's already it's it's dangerous for black this position in any case so whatever it's played now it's played now in any case it was a sitting target to be taken so now knight f3 not only unveiling g file pressure so threatening rook takes g immediately but why has the big threat of bishop e7 to f6 now this bishop really has become from bad bishop <laughs> uh, to to actually a fantastically attacking uh, bishop bishop e7 to f6 has to be parried but first black addresses the g file issue now stops bishop e7 but white has the outside pass pawn uh, to try and deflect the rook and we see now white playing this not minding because that would mean bishop e7 so not minding rook takes because bishop e7 is winning here for example this threatens mate and you can see this play on both sides of the board has yielded uh, a totally winning attack like this for example so black's really uh, overloaded here so rook b7 a6 is just overload on both sides of the board check queen g5 black's really helpless here uh we have rook a2 threatening simply a7 and now the queen's put in siberia <laughs> so queen c6 a7 the queen put in siberia on a8 it's beautiful play on both sides of the board so bishop b6 rook f7 queen d8 just getting rid of the blockade now of the a pawn is absolutely winning why well, could just queen here but Leela is torturing <laughs> the fire chess engine with knight g5 instead queening is also clearly better for white so this is just desperate this this pawn sack here and now uh Leela takes on <laughs> f7 two connected pass pawns uh and the game carries on a bit until both sides recognize it's absolutely gigantic advantage for white the game ended here uh, we could carry it on a little bit bishop h6 uh, b6 uh, say the rook going behind the pawn crashing through we can actually win both bishops potentially <laughs> if we play our cards right if we want to win both bishops so anyway Leela vindicating my dad's choice of the stonewall <laughs> attack system in this game but also of course Magnus Carlsen has been using the Dutch Stonewall with black uh, with great success so there's some great games of the Dutch Stonewall on the channel generally so my dad had a point it's a, it is a fearsome attacking weapon and sometimes the bishop can be not just a bad piece but uh, a really aggressive dynamic piece uh, as when it springs into action it can be the winning hero piece okay hope you enjoyed this game Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.